Let's talk about the news, why you shouldn't listen to the news. Headlines do more to clarify than terrify. Mm -hmm. And you know that. It, it, there's a reason why they do headlines. It's called clickbait advertising. That's what they do. And that's why you need to talk to, like, especially in our housing market, professionals, what's going on right now. And I have a few examples of that one on, like, for an example, Susie Orman came out in June of 2020 with a big post, uh, tweet, everything. Do not buy a house in this housing market right now. Because when everyone comes out of forbearance at the end of August, now Susie has her space. Phoenix has, you know, housing has their space. In September, for example, if you buy a $300,000 house, all these people are going to go into foreclosure and it's 2008 again and your house will be worth 150000 So hold off buying. And what happened? They lost 67% equity from that time. And, and most recently, um, everyone knows Goldman Sachs, right? Mm-hmm. Goldman Sachs, real popular financial bureau, um, ul ulterior motive on things. What did they say about the our Phoenix here locally when they came out with an article on Jan or January 25th? They said Phoenix, Arizona is going to be one of the top four people to get back to 2008, where home prices are going to drop 20 to 25 percent. They doubled down on that in March, wow. and guess what? And and now recently they've reverted back to that. Saying, mm -hmm. oh, you know what? Now, now it's either going to go up a little bit or change. Well, you can't change midstream. That's like that's like the Eagles playing the Cowboys, and they pick the Cowboys to blow the Eagles out, and the Eagles are up twenty eight to nothing in the fourth quarter, and they say in the fourth quarter with two minutes left. We told you the Eagles are going to win. I guess I watch the news a lot just so I know what my clients, homeowners, what they're reading. Um, just because, so when they ask me questions, I, I kind of know where their information is coming from, but I, I see so many, like you mentioned, Goldman Sachs, they, you know, they come out with something months ago and then they change it and they'll change it again. Unfortunately, they're all guesses, you know, no one truly knows where things are going to go. Um, but when you're looking at statistics, especially, I think you and I specifically here in the Phoenix market follow, you know, data driven sources, there's nothing showing that home prices are going to devalue, uh, you know, let's call it significantly, you know, could they go up? Could they go down? Yes. Are they going to go way, way down more than likely high probability not. Um, and I think too, uh, with one of the recent graphs that I saw, and it's one of those ones that got, you know, it was put out, call it eight months ago, uh, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all these other, you know, they had their home price predictions and they all predicted pretty, bleak or negative uh home values for the phoenix area or even nationally uh and then obviously i think in the, the last month they that same graph those same people uh, i think except one of them they're all showing positive trends in, in home values 100 percent. and the other thing that i think we should point out and this isn't a biased decision it's all about data because that's what we follow because you and i both follow listen if you are getting value out of all of our videos and you have any real estate questions, regardless where you live, text message me at 480-498-3334. I come up with data and I'm posting good information, but guess what? It's because I follow people who are a lot smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. And these people have a history of being successful. What now they're going to be wrong once in a while. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's just that data. What we need to point out though, is when you see national data, you have to go national, macro, and micro. Our Phoenix market has a history of when it comes to, say, home prices. Usually we're higher than the national average. I think a lot of times when you're when we're watching the news, especially if it's more of national news, they're just kind of taking every city, every state, every you know little town in Iowa and just throwing it in a big mixing bowl and saying, hey, here's the real estate data, which you know, is it data? Yes. Is it real? Possibly. But when you're someplace that's completely opposite from those places, you're like, well, that's, you know, you believe, oh, my market's doing this. Then you talk to, you know, wherever you are, a, a real estate professional or someone like yourself who networks with the best of the best. And you're like, well, that's, that's cool. That's what you're reading. But let me, let me actually show you, you know, on, on paper, what's really happening. So, and the, the one thing that bothers me more about the headlines, and you've been seeing it recently, 
And I am telling you right now, you can save this tape, people, and come back to me. They've been calling for a foreclosure crisis for the last three years. And most recently, they're calling for it again. You know how many foreclosures were in Arizona last month? 24. I think this is, I think, just a good thing to point out. I noticed the news when you listen to all these housing stories, they base a lot of things on percentages. Um, and I think going back to 2020, 2021, with all the rules and regulations that the government put out, they basically banned foreclosures. So when you go from zero foreclosures to 24 foreclosures, <laughs> when you're looking at it on a you know statistical percentage basis, you know, that's what the headline says, you know, foreclosures up in Phoenix. I don't even know what the numbers, they'll call it 2000%. And then you're like, oh, 24. No. Way below, way below. And, and plus the other part of that is people have an average now compared to 2008 where people use their equity as, a, as an ATM. Yep. People have an average of $297,000 in equity right now. Wow. Do you really think some of these people are going to give up that house for that equity? Now, not all of them do, but mm -hmm. ninety over 90% have 10% or more in equity. And the banks don't want these houses back. For, so for all you people waiting for this foreclosure wave and think you're getting a deal, it, it, it's not going to happen. And, and that's why I said... We are now in a skill-based market. And, that, and that's why I appreciate you having me on here. Um, you and I have known each other for a real long time. And, you know, it's great that you do things like this to educate people, to actually get the truth out there of what's going on. Because you actually care. You want them, you want them to, you want them to make a good investment. You want them to have a good life. You don't want them to listen to the news or the Facebook or YouTube experts who have an ulterior motive on why they're doing things. If you're looking for more real estate information or want to get that information when we put it out, make sure to subscribe to our channel here. But I also think that this video will be of great interest to you and you have to check it out.